Good afternoon. Pastor Withers here at New Hope Community Church. I want to give you a few nuggets for the day. Won't take much of your time. I just want to share a portion of the scripture that we all are familiar with. And we all go through it because we are human beings. And I love this version of uh, the scripture and this portion of the scripture, I should say. And because uh, it's so relevant to our day in and day out life. And I know that you'll probably hear this portion of the scripture on many occasions. But let's look at the book of James chapter 1, one of my favorite verses in the scriptures. And it talks about uh, chapter 1 starting out with verse 2. Brethren, I uh, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally, without reproach, and it will be given to him. Let's go over to verse 12. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Father, we thank you for your word to this evening. We pray, Lord, again, that you would give us listening ears and attentive hearts to receive your word. Father, these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to share something with you this afternoon that hopefully will be helpful to you. And I want to write on the board here just a moment so you can get a gist of where I'm coming from. I think there is a huge, significant difference between trials and temptations. And I know we can all agree on that. I got my back turned to you, but I'm still talking with you, okay? So when we look at trials and temptations, let's just remember one entity in this of itself. When you look at trials, just say, God is in it. God is in it. When you look at temptations, say, the devil is in it. If you can remember that, you're already 80% defeating the enemy. Just remember, trials, God is in it. Temptations, the devil is in it. The devil is always in the undergirdment of trying to defeat God's people in some kind of way. I've learned this. Don't ever misunderstand the fact that God may test you and me to go through trials in order to strengthen our faith, but it has never been his intent to tempt him, to tempt us. God doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. There is nothing in God's character in which he is attracted to sin. You see, it would be totally contrary for God himself to come here because it's no sin in him, in his nature. It would be impossible for him to go against the character of his nature by tempting us with temptation. God is not going to do that. He never has and he never would, which means he can never be the source of temptation. This is something that is powerful and we'll talk about it momentarily. But when you look at the trials, I want you to see that there is a significant difference between trials and temptations. That should make every child of God a perfect winner in the kingdom of God because we know where our defeats or failures will come from. It will come from the forces of the enemy. Now think about this. Sir. Trials are outside our sources that are beyond our control and that forces us as believers to interact with faith. In other words, in other words, in order to go through trials, you must have faith to trust God 
that he's going to bring you through this situation. That's just the way it is. It takes faith in order to trust God through the trials because by and large, trials will test our faith so we can understand our source and our resource. So it helps us to develop perseverance. It helps us to develop maturity. It helps us to trust in God for our source and our resource. So when we put our trust in the Lord, it is always to develop our character, knowing that no matter what the outcome, the Lord has his best interest at heart for you and me. You see, it's in the human nature for us to be tempted, but it's not in the human nature for us to succumb to temptation under the spirit of the living God. You see, and that's what God wants to deal with us about because we are broken people and broken people need to be mended and put back together. And let me just say, it's going to start with this brain. That's why we often uh, have this issue is, how come I can't get over or get through from my temptations? Well, we need to understand one thing. Those temptations, you don't have to succumb to the temptation. You got to know that Jesus is there with you. But it's also a brain thing that we got to heal our brain, our mental state as well. That's why that scripture says in Romans 12, 1 and 2, that our brain needs to be renewed day in and day out. In other words, we need to rewire our thinking process. How do I do that, Pastor? Well, listen. Oh, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if that be in the virtue, if that be in the praise, to think on these things. We got to watch what we're thinking about. We got to take every thought captive. We got to make sure that we're hanging around the right people that can pour inside of us. We got to read some good books so we don't be diverted back into our old ways because behold, all things are passed away. Behold, all things things become new. And that starts with our mental state. Our mental state must align with our spiritual state in order for our problems to dissipate. Do you get me? It's got to align. The mental state must align with our spiritual state in order for our problems to dissipate. And that's the way God anticipates for it to be. You see, if the temptations are not resisted, obviously what we end up with is the result of spiritual death. I heard a pastor tell a young, good-looking assistant pastor one time about being careful about the uh, immorality in his ministry. And the assistant said, uh, don't worry, pastor, I, I, I am socializing in numbers. And uh, I, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to have a problem with that because there is safety in numbers. And the pastor looked at him and said to him, yeah, but there's more safety in accident. In other words, get out of there. Get out of there. Run like Joseph run when the temptations come. Uh, move away from that. You know your weaknesses. I know my weaknesses. And so uh, you know yourself better than anyone else. Don't set yourself up for failure. It's like a salesperson back in the day that would come knocking on your door and you would open the door and he would begin to try to sell you a product. And uh, all you had to do was give him a firm no at the door, but you kept giving him options by saying, well, you know what? I'm not really interested in this. I'm not really interested, but you kept the door ajar. What you have to do with any salesperson like the devil, close the door. No, I don't want any. And that's the way, the only way to deal with the devil and the forces of the adversary, close the doors, shut them tight and say no there are no negotiables here. And so when we flee temptations, we have to have no forward address. And that's just the way it is in the kingdom of God. It has been said uh, when a dog is being trained by his master, food would often be put in front of the dog. And while the master tells the dog as he is disciplining him not to eat the food, the dog begins to do one thing that is extremely interesting. 
The dog keeps his eyes on the master because the dog knows that the food is an overwhelming temptation if he takes his eyes off the master. Always look at the master's face and we'll run away from temptation. You see, God protects us from things that we cannot handle. When temptations are way beyond our, our uh, control, God will step in and he'll help you, but you have to want to be helped. We all have stumbled and fallen short of the glory of God. The scripture says, there's none righteous, no, not one. But it does not give us carte blanche to do whatever we want to do. I want you to know, I want you to leave here tonight or this afternoon remembering one thing, trials are coming. God is on his way, and but God is in the trial. And temptations are always the devil's in the details, my friend. You have to know the difference. And when you know the difference and when you discover the difference and when we fight not against flesh and blood, but it's against principalities, it's against spiritual dominions that are in high places, things that are far beyond us. Listen, there are sources and, and things of that nature that's trying to come against you to take your joy, to take your peace, to take to take your comfort, to take your mind. I want you to know you have to resist those things, whatever. It could be something in your flesh. It could be lust. It could be anything. It could be money. It could be anger. It could be all types of things that is coming against you. Whatever that's going to trigger you, you have to deal with the behavior portion of it. You got to deal with the feelings of it. You got to know these triggers. And then you got to work backwards and say, God, I'm going to do my part through faith. I'm going to study to show myself a proven to God, a woman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Lord, I'm going to stay in prayer. Lord, I know that prayer, prayer is my, is my number one weapon. I must be in communications with you. And Lord, I'm going to get a hold of some good Christian people that can help me to walk through my issues in life. And we're going to stand strong. They're going to pray for me. They're going to intercede for me. And yet, Lord, I'm going to do my part by practicing what I don't know until I know it. Amen. Listen, I hope this afternoon has been a blessing to you. I, I just want you to have some of these nuggets that can help you on down the road and may the blessings of God be upon your life. I want to pray for you before you go this afternoon. I want you to know there is hope for the child of God. I want you to know that you do not have to be despair. I want you to know that there is no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. You hear that? No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise up against you in judgment, God will condemn them because this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and the righteousness is of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. God has your back. He's concerned about your well-being. So Father, I pray right now for every person who is listening to this voice tonight, I pray your blessings will be upon them. I pray, oh Lord God, that you will build a wall of protection around them, that you will strengthen them, that you will give them grace and mercy, that you would uplift them, Lord, when they're going through the fire, that they would know if God is for them, who can be against them? Lord, bless their comings and their goings, bless them on their jobs, bless their income, bless their household, bless their health. Lord, I pray and bless their mental state, Lord, in every area of their life. I just pour a blessing upon their life. And Lord, we'll surely give you the glory, the honor, and the thanks. Lord, for all that you have done and all that you will do, in Jesus' name we pray. Look, I pray that God's blessings will continue to be upon you. Join us Sunday morning right back here at 11 a.m. God bless you, and I'll see you then. Amen.